Okay, I've, uh, I'm, I'll, I'll just start with the first song then, uh, Don't Worry About Me. Mm -hmm. where, where in the process kind of was this song written? Was it an early one? Uh, it's quite a late one, one actually. Oh. It was more, it was like a year and a half ago maybe. Okay. Yeah. And you mentioned that uh, maybe a couple of years ago you didn't have the pressures of people knowing who you are, mm. uh, labels. You've had a couple of accolades, being nominated for a Brit Award, mm. um, the BBC Good Sound Poll, which, which is a big thing. So yeah. What was the kind of mindset going into those songs and writing those songs? Well, that was the point because there's a lady at my record label who's amazing and she's really good at kind of was kind of coaching me as a songwriter. And she yeah. said at one point, <clears throat> she was like, "You you need you can be more honest in your songs." I was like, "What do you mean?" She was like, "You can just be really simple and don't feel like you need to overcomplicate your lyrics ever." I was like, "Oh, okay." And then she kind of almost gave me permission to write yeah. a super honest song. So that was. Yeah, that was kind of how that song came out. Okay. And I wrote it like in the same week, I think I wrote that one, <coughs> The Last Word, and a song called Cry Like Me. Okay. Mm. And when you write a song like this, can I assume it's, it's first music or is it different every time? It's actually different every time, yeah. Sometimes it's a bit of lyric and melody comes like at the same time, which is really mm. weird. Um, and then other times I will sit and play the piano for you know, a really long time before mm -hmm. I even sing anything. Right. Yeah. And I've, I've, I've read about that, that you also write with other people, so... Yeah. How... how, how what, what is the benefit in that for you? Um, learning, to be honest. Um, it's all kind of part of the experience, I guess. Writing on your own is great, and like half the album I wrote on my own. But the other half, I, I really wanted to write with other people, because you get to say things that you might not normally say, or they'll, they'll challenge you, and you can challenge them, and you can learn about how they write and sometimes sure. sometimes if I'm like oh I've been writing for like months at the point of writing an album I've been writing every day for months I'm kind of out for a bit like I'm, I don't right. have much to say now right. I just need like a week to like build some more stuff up and then kind of harvest mm. um, but then the person you're writing with will be like oh actually well this is happening in my life I'm like great <laughs> and then as you know and then we kind of connect on it together and yeah, so it's really it's different, different kind of process. It's great. So, so can, you, can you give me an example of maybe someone who challenged you or, or a song where you, was uh, where you were challenged or, or where? Um, yeah, I think a song called Cloud Nine. Okay. I wrote with a guy called Jimmy Napes, who's amazing. Right. Um, and we, like, we've written a few songs together and every session we start just by literally chatting for like two hours. Okay. Um, maybe not two hours, like an hour. <laughs> two hours and we have some lunch. Um, <laughs> And then we write a song. <laughs> but, um, but the idea, because I'd never really realised that we're writing the song, but actually we'll be chatting for, you know, an hour or whatever. And then we're like, oh, cool, well, this is a great song. Awesome. <laughs> and then we've got this whole thing with, you know, he's told me about someone that he knows or something's happened with him, and I've told him something that's happened with him. And then you get a, a better song when you're both kind of connected on the same topic, mm -hmm. rather than him just helping me write a song. You right. know, we both have to be kind of in it together. But, but so it's, it's very open then, once a session like this starts, yeah. you don't have anything yet, but you... It has to be really, yeah. Right. I think. But that's how the best ones work. I mean, sometimes, you know, it doesn't have to be like that, but, um, but I found that the best ones tend to be like that. Okay. And Cloud9, if, if we go into that song, well, what was the discussion you had, that hour discussion before? We were talking it? about, he, he had had a, a friend or something who... Who was a friend? Yeah, a friend who was having some kind of relationship issue, or mm. I think. And then we were talking about that for ages, and I said, oh yeah, I had a friend, this is this, or what. and then I started talking about our families, and they got, yeah, kind of all got, um, we kind of like got really kind of deep into it, and then we both kept saying this phrase, or like cloud nine, if you're on cloud nine, you don't want to come off the cloud, or whatever. Or I think I, either me or him had written down cloud nine before mm. the session as like an idea for a song, and then it ended up becoming relevant with what we were talking mm. about, yeah. And then, the, 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 because uh, Cloud9 is one, one of the, I, th I think, slower ones, is it mm. kind of the piano ballad? Yeah. So does that become apparent in that session, or is that already there, or, or when, when does that...? Uh, does yeah, the demo of Cloud9 pretty much sounds exactly the same okay. as the record, apart from it just doesn't have the kind of lovely strings on it and stuff. Mm -hmm. And I re kind of replayed the piano on a big grand and stuff, but yeah, and all the kind of music was d we do on the day. Okay. Yeah. And if we, if we go to playing live, then because well, once these songs are finished, and I suppose they are finished quite a while before you uh, release the album. Yeah. So 
once you start performing, do you have to kind of reconnect with them or is it still... Yeah, it's a very different thing performing a song live right. for sure. Because um, obviously playing it in the studio, also because I've heard them so many times. Sure. Um, but that's why playing them live is great because it's a very different thing. Um, you know, I have to, I'm singing the song, I get one chance you know, to, to sing it. Whereas right. in the studio I'm like, oh no, do it again, do it again. Do it again. <laughs> um, yeah, so I've got this one chance to kind of deliver the song as I want to the people there to, to receive it. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, it's a very different thing, but, um, but it does definitely make me reconnect to the songs because after having a big break from them, mm -hmm. I listen to them kind of constantly for a long time. Um, or like if I just finished a song, I'd just like listen to it over and over and over again. <laughs> um, and yeah, then it's really fun to kind of come back and get to connect with them again. And, and once, you, once you go around uh, venues all, all over the place and, and then play them for people, what? Are, are you very, very conscious on stage in a sense? Are you very deliberate? Yeah, no, actually. I think I am. I've grown to like understand what I'm like on stage, but okay. I, in the beginning, I just kind of was like, I don't know what I'm going to do. Let's mm. just work it out. But that's why, because I'm, I'm just like, I'm playing, I'm singing, I'm just going to kind of do my thing. And then after I'd you know, been doing it more and more, I worked out that I really like talking to the audience. That's the oh, thing yes. that I really like to do um, between songs or, or whenever. Um, and where you are in the world kind of depends how responsive people are to that, how much they like it. But you can just tell right. during a show if people are like laughing and enjoying it, then I'll, I'll do a bit more. But if they're like, shut up, play the next <laughs> one, I'm like, cool. I'll carry on. Um, so yeah, it really depends where. Where I am, but it's just taking a, like a long, taking like a period of time to just develop that, I guess, that style. Because one thing I noticed when, when I was doing research is that on your Facebook, Instagram, that there are very, uh, a lot of things kind of trying to connect with, with the audience. Mm. You have a little uh, touring blog, I think, yeah. and, and, and li little things just to be, be able to connect, and especially in this day and age with, with social media. Is that important as an artist to have that? Yeah, I think so. I think more so because everyone's doing it. Mm. I mean, I think if I had the choice, I probably wouldn't be on Twitter all the time. Right. It's all the time because I just don't like to be on my phone that much. But, but it is an amazing thing that people can, like, fans can be so close to me or feel really close, sure. and they can they can send me a a private message and say, "Oh, I came to your show and it was lovely. Thank you so much." And I can see that and I can reply. And there's a, that's really a really lovely thing. Mm. Yeah. What What is the best reaction you have from someone? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> I've been some lovely ones. Okay. But some of my songs, are weddings and funerals. Right. And they always tell me about, you know, oh, my, someone died. I'm like, oh, again. <laughs> <laughs> we played a song at your funeral. Like, oh. But it's, it's lovely that they mm. use the songs. Yeah. And, and then the, the other side, obviously, of social media, and then you already kind of touched upon it, is, is that as a, as a public figure, an artist, then, then people kind of expect certain things from you. Yeah, so, they do, so yeah. Because they have it from other artists that they follow. Sure, and, then, and, and so, so what's that like, being in the public eye in a way, and people having an opinion, and then kind of voicing that as well? I just try to try my best. I'm like, <laughs> I'm just a human being. I'm, sure. like, I'm not, a, like, social media is like a social science. Like, it's so, <laughs> it's such a science, and right. when to post things, and how, what kind of images, you know, people tend to like more. I was like, I've got a clue. So I just <laughs> put something that I think is interesting. Um, mm. So yeah, you just have to. I just have to kind of do my best. And that, and Hope that, for the best. Yeah. Whatever happens, yeah. Let it happen. <laughs> uh, final question then. Um, the album title, "Things I've Never Said." Mm. When did that pop into your mind? Um, that came out of a writing session. Okay. So I did a session, and I came up with a lyric of like all all the things I've never said or something. Um, and we didn't end up using the song, but then um, I was kind of starting to think about titles, and I was uh, pretty much as soon as I wrote the lyric, I was like, that's a really interesting title. And then, um, yeah, I just think it's kind of an invitation um, into the album, mm. I guess. And I, I didn't want to have a song that was called Things I've Never Said, because I felt like I wanted the songs to be like almost like a list of the things I've never talked about before, but had written in songs. Francis, thank you thank so much you. for your time. Thanks.